guys, it's Julie from Julie's Designs. This is another thrift flip video where I take items I've thrifted, found on the side of the road, or was given to me, and upcycle them for resale. So I have literally been tripping over these things. Somebody gave them to me and I am very appreciative, but they are huge and they gotta go. So today we're getting in the workshop and we're getting stuff cleared out. These are amazing, guys. If y'all ever see a bed on the side of the road that has like amazing feet or spindles or whatever, pump the brakes, do a U-turn and go back and get them because they make the most amazing candlesticks or risers. A lot of people don't even use candlesticks anymore to put candles on. They use it to like elevate their decor. They look amazing in a grouping and y'all look at this. I'm so excited. These are gonna turn out so good. Let's just go ahead and get started on these. I decided to add this project into the video in case you didn't have any tools but wanted to upcycle candlesticks. I have all these candlesticks that need to be made over. So the first thing we're gonna do is spray them with Rust-Oleum chalk paint, which is in my paint sprayer. I'm cleaning off the nozzle. I do not clean it after every use. I just clean it before I use it. And I'm using chalk paint because that's what I have, but I am not planning on distressing these. So if you just wanted to use spray paint, that would also work. When using a paint sprayer or even a can of spray paint, you definitely want to be patient and do more thin coats of paint as opposed to one thick coat where you could end up with drips or crackle. You just want to be patient, put on a thin coat, let it dry, and then put on the second coat. I ended up putting two coats of paint on these candlesticks. I want to add some natural wood to these candlesticks. So I picked up these circle plaques from Hobby Lobby. It is $2.99 for two of the big ones and $2.99 for four of the smaller ones. For so for 50 cents and a dollar, I think that's a great price and a huge time saver. We want to antique these, so I'm going to add my antiquing wax and water mixture. I just keep it in a Tupperware bowl because I use it all the time. I use about three parts water to one part antiquing wax, but if you want it darker, then you would just add more antiquing wax, and it just gives it a nice matte aged finish like it had just been sitting out in the weather forever this is one that is dry so you can see the difference on here i love this antiquing wax mixture once both of the pieces are dry i want to glue them together i'm going to use gorilla glue clear grip and i'm just going to put a nice generous bead of glue around the candlestick and then i'm going to turn it over and put it on our wooden top. I like to put round stuff together upside down because I just find it's so much easier to find the center this way and you just wanna let it dry for 24 hours before you mess with it again. To turn these chunky spindles into a candlestick, I need to make sure the top and the bottom are flat. So I'm cutting out the round part at the top so it's nice and flat, and then I'll go all the way at the end of the spindle and cut out the bottom. Now for the next spindle, I wanna turn it into two. So I'm gonna cut the top and the bottom like I just did, and then I'm also going to cut the center and that'll give me a set of these three big chunky candlesticks. Now I need to address these big holes in my candlesticks. I've been using IOD air dry clay to fill all my holes. They don't move or shrink like caulk. And if you let it dry overnight, you can then sand it even with your piece and it works so great. So I'm gonna fill up these holes. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than the hole. That way it can dry and I can sand it down smooth. 
Then I'm going to paint the clay with Waverly Antiquing Wax. That way it'll blend in to the wood finish. Because of the hole in these candlesticks, my plan was to paint them white. But after putting the antiquing wax on the hole and the clay, it just blended in perfectly. So I love the age on here. What I decided to do was just add a coat of the antiquing wax and water mixture. That way the imperfections don't stand out as much and this will kind of blend the whole piece together but it'll still have lots of character and I absolutely love the way these turned out. I'm so glad I decided not to paint them. For this next project, I'm going to be cutting down these bed posts that were given to me. So I'm going to cut wherever there is a stop where I feel like would make a good candlestick. So this square part where it doesn't have a groove in it, I'm going to cut because a lot of the square parts have grooves in it to where, you know, the bed fit together and I don't want that part of my candlestick. So I'm just going to cut that part off and now I'm going to turn the candlestick around and I'm going to make three more candlesticks out of this big long piece. For these taller candlesticks, I want to add a square underneath to add extra stability since they are so tall. So I just found a spare piece of wood in my shop and I'm going to cut it into a square that I can then attach to the bottom of this candlestick. That way I know it will not fall over. To attach my square piece of wood to the candlestick, I'm going to take my wood glue, add some wood glue, and then I'm going to take my bride nailer and nail it into place. And then like I did with the previous candlestick, I'm going to take my Waverly Antiquing Wax and just paint this block. That way the wood tones match. We want to make sure our base color is all the same for our next step we're going to be doing to these candlesticks. All right, y'all, I'm so excited about this. We're going to be trying milk paint for the first time in the color Flower Sack, which is a white color. On the, this is a sample package and it says to read the full directions online, which y'all know I did not do. I'm just going to go by what I saw other people do, but it does say to mix half the paint mixture with half water. So I'm using one teaspoon here. I don't know how much paint it's going to take. And then I can tell y'all in the end, I ended up doing four times this amount of paint to paint these four candlesticks and I did three coats of paint on each candlestick. You just want to make sure it's thoroughly blended. I thought a fork would work good, but it didn't. So I ended up having to go get a spoon to mix this up. You could also use like a blender ball or immersion blender. I didn't have either of those things. So I'm just making sure that I'm thoroughly mixing up this paint. Once your paint is thoroughly blended, then it's time to paint. I know it's going to take a few coats because I'm going white on a very dark color. I'm also using a chip brush, which I don't recommend. In the end, I ended up changing my brush to more of a smooth bristle brush, and that worked much better. But when I'm start using a product for the first time, it's all trial and error. I'm going to figure out what works for me and what doesn't. And that's why I like to use it the first time on camera so I can let y'all know what I did that worked and what I did that did not work. I want to do some experimenting that I saw other people do to help the chippiness come out in milk paint. So I sprayed this with a clear coat of sealer. When it has a shiny or surface or a sealer on it, it's supposed to make it chip even more. So for this big long candlestick, I decided to go ahead and experiment with this one because since there's such a long skinny part, you know what I'm saying? I thought like extra chippiness would be great. So let's see what happens. 
I'm not positive what it's supposed to look like, but this is what it looks like after the first coat is all the way dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my second coat and see what happens. I don't see any chippiness yet. And it's very streaky, but like I said, I think that's because of my paintbrush choice. At this point is when I move to the smooth bristle brush. And as you can see, it covers much better. So when using milk paint, I definitely recommend using a brush like this. My daughter has a baseball game in 10 minutes. So I'm trying to hurry this along. I went and grabbed my blow dryer out the bathroom. I've seen them on Jamie Ray Vintage many times take out the heat gun to force the crackle and it's definitely getting chippy i do want to put one more coat on here because it's just not quite white enough for me it's still kind of streaky so i'm going to quickly put one more coat on all of these and i don't know we'll see what happens but i'm pretty excited about this last night i put the third coat of paint on and then went to my daughter's baseball game so it's the next day and i'm gonna show y'all the results so these two small ones, I put milk paint on, then I use the blow dryer to help it crackle. And it just pretty much crackled on this side. And then this one I really like, I put it on and then put a little bit of the blow dryer on and it's like a little bit less crackle, but I kind of like that. I still have to sand these. Now this one, I didn't do anything to. I just put the milk paint on and let it dry and I kind of like this too like it's just a little bit of crackle here and there nothing too crazy and then I'll sand it and a little bit more should come off and then this one is the one that you remember I put the clear coat on and it's super super chippy right here this is probably where the sealer didn't have time to dry because I just sprayed the sealer on and then put the milk paint on so if you like this effect, I would use a sealer. I personally like the ones where I just put the milk paint on and then use the blow dryer to kind of help the crackle come along. This is the look that I personally like. But since this was my first time doing this, I just wanted to experiment with different things that I saw other people do when using milk paint so that y'all can see how it came out and what effect you like best and what effect you want to try but overall i am happy with this i'm excited it did what it was supposed to do i was kind of nervous to sand this piece because i thought maybe all the chippiness would just fall off when i sanded it but that's not what happened so i sanded the smooth parts like i normally would just to smooth out all the paint and then i hid the edges where i wanted it to be more distressed just like I would normally distress any other piece, I did the same thing with this milk paint and it came out perfectly. Now it's time to wax the pieces. I'm just using Folk Art brand clear wax. And just like with sanding, I was scared when I put the wax on here, all the paint would just chip off. But again, that did not happen. So don't be scared to sand your piece and don't be scared to wax it. So when using this kind of wax, you just want to, I kind of generously put it on and I went through all the pieces and put a coat of wax on them. Then I went back with a dry paper towel and just kind of wipe the excess wax off. And then where it was extra chippy on the piece, I just kind of dabbed it instead of wiping it. And that worked perfectly. For the first candlesticks, I use store-bought round plaques, but for this one, I want to make my own. So I just have this thick piece of wood that was in my shop, but I'm using the plaques as templates to create my tops for these candlesticks. And I'm going to take my jigsaw and just cut it out. When you're cutting out a circle, you just kind of want to go slowly, trying to follow the line the best that you can. It's not going to be perfect. It's really hard to get a perfect circle with a jigsaw, but it's okay because you know, it gives it a handmade look, which I personally do not mind. Now, once it's all the way cut out to really get your edges smooth, I just put it at the corner of my counter and I just go and turn my circle. And this really helps to smooth everything out and get it as close to a perfect circle as possible. 
I painted the tops of my rounds with the Waverly Antiquing Wax without any water. So this is what they look like if you use Antiquing Wax at 100% without any water added. I did this because the base color on these candlesticks, like the chippy color coming through is very dark. So I wanted the tops to match with that. And I'm just gonna add glue and I put them upside down so that way I can make sure they're perfectly in the middle. Then I'm gonna come back with my brow nailer and just put one nail right in the middle just to ensure that they stay in place. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the milk paint and the finish on these candlesticks. And as always, all the products I use will be in the description below. What did y'all guys think of the transformation from this into what I created? Leave a comment below and let me know if you feel like this is something that you can recreate. Do you like this style? I mean, and I feel like this is so much cheaper. Y'all go online and look how much these things cost. So if you can do it on your own, even if it's for your own house, you're saving so much money. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big